is this? We've just been working so hard. Balance it first. Okay, we're gonna try to be really um, surgical with this thing here. I'm gonna just make sure that we have an out because right now it's gonna fall on top of it. Okay, push up. Push up. Go. Oh, no. Okay, let's tip it up on the top of those spikes. Okay, now I'll hold. I think you should go there and try to spin it so we can kind of roll like a tire out of here. Okay, I'll hold it from hitting the bed. You push and roll over. Go. We're not done yet. Well, now you got room though. It's great. That's cool. Now the rain can wash it away. Okay, so I came inside to make some lunch because I'm starving and I know Jake is too. He's still outside working like a beast. Um, he's such a workhorse. So I just wanted to show you guys what I'm making for lunch because it smells delicious. So I'm sauteing up some dried morels 
and some dried chanterelles that we picked last year. And I'm also making some big, some like big noodle pasta for mac and cheese. So I will show you guys what it all looks like at the end. The morels are like my absolute favorite mushroom and they smell so good. So I'm just gonna put that in with the mac and cheese and voila. It's mac and cheese with <laughs> some mushrooms on top. We have dried morels and dried chanterelles. Mm. Yeah, we've had this before. It's actually really good to put mushrooms in your mac and cheese. Can I cheat and do something that I like to do? There's sure. some sriracha ra. Okay, here we go. Ready? Are you going to try some with me? I put hot sauce on mine. Mm. It's good. Power food. I can feel the mushrooms just giving me energy. Mm -hmm. A lot of snow in just one night. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Sniper. <laughs> what? Ah. <laughs> it's Canadian geese still training. Is this? What happened to spring? Snow? No. No to the snow.
All right, come here, guys. Come here. Sit. Puma. Sit. Puma, come here. Puma, come. Puma, come here. Sit. A snowball. He's still got it. Look, we have another one. Look. Kai. Sit. Sit. There you go. There you go. It's all good. Oops. <laughs> Bed number six. Six. This one's gonna be 
Sunchokes, aka Jerusalem artichokes, aka no, I'm just kidding. One purple, one white. Yeah. And there's snow everywhere, and we're falling, <laughs> slipping, and it's really difficult, but we're doing it. Rain, snow, grapple, hail, sun. All in one. Today. Amazing. This is the Jake and Nicole special sun choke soil. <laughs> These are the, the hard to find ones, the purple ones. Yeah. It's just the purple outside and then they have the white on the inside just like the regular ones. It seems like this last year we um, had a lot more of the white, right? Yeah. So now we'll see if we can uh, fill up this entire bed full of purples. What is this bed gonna be? Potatoes. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, put them in a stew. Hey. Why are we planting them so below the top of the bed? Because as they get bigger, we can add more soil to them. Uh, red. Red. Okay, and we can save the rest to plant in the second raised bed of these. Uh, why don't you just save the purple ones then? I love purple. I'm going to plant them. So the goal is to have it fill up this way, but also have it fill down, and then We'll keep filling this in and... I like our soil mix for the potatoes here. It's like 40% dirt, 60% compost. And a little Love. sand, vermiculite, peat moss, and lard. Looking good.
I was out here trying to get a tan. I'm lacking in vitamin D for sure. And it was so sunny a second ago. And now is this grapple or hail? What is this? <laughs> it's little white balls. Puma, Kai, where did my son go, bros? Hey Kai, how's Roberto doing? <laughs> Roberto is uh, starting to lean back a bit. <laughs> it's my jacket, bro. Good idea. Nice idea, bro. Bra. Mommy Chula. Oh, Not quite. Okay. Oh, oh, no, oh come God. on. The whole board shifted on me. Alright, that was 90. Six percent successful. I don't know if you guys on YouTube are interested in how we're building each and every bed. We've been updating our Patreon members about you know how we fill the beds up with the stories on Patreon. And now we'll take the wood chips and we'll put that on top and we'll really jump on it and bang it in so there's no air pockets. So that's what we're doing right now. Nicole's getting more material there for wood chips. All right, so now the logs are underneath all the wood chips and uh, Nicole looks freaking exhausted holding the phone right now for you guys. <laughs> My hand is shaking. <laughs> I'm really trying to hold the camera still. These trees were all uh, young alders, probably like, alder is the bamboo of our area. It's the renewable resource. Anywhere there's a disturbed area, usually that humans cause like a logging road or whatever, any clearing, alder grows at first. You should see these blue boys just waiting for the permission to come in here. All right, this is like up. their ball pit. <laughs> they love the wood chips. This is the last time you get to go in the beds since dog training. So Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, AKA sunchokes. I've always called them sunchokes. People around this part of the world, they call them artichokes. Like they 
full on call them artichokes. At the end of the season, when the plant dies, you dig in the soil and you harvest these guys and you wash them off and you eat them and cook them like potatoes. But in my opinion, they taste good raw like water chestnuts, a little more of a nutty taste. Um, if you're interested in gardening for survival, I mean, you gotta plant your potatoes, you gotta plant your zucchini, you gotta plant your, um, your sunchokes and your garlic and your onions, and you gotta know all the native plants around you that are edible too. So we really wanna plant a bunch of these so that we have some calories growing here in the Como Red What's garden. cool is that a lot of you gardeners out there are really complaining in the comments that you think our soil is gonna be too acidic or it's gonna have too much carbon. And I just don't agree with you. The proof will be in the pudding, you know? You guys stay tuned this summer and you'll see if the garden grows. But here's why I think that you're not correct because the fresh wood chips that make up the bottom half of this raised bed have a lot of carbon. We just chipped them. But here's what gives me a lot of hope. This was in the soil that we just, Nicole and I just scraped up soil from the pandemic victory garden you guys saw us plant last year. And we are recycling the soil over here now in the permanent garden. A lot of the wood chips came along for the ride. So these are wood chip cakes that are now like caked together, um, cooked, one year fermented, you know? And they're all spongy, check this out. If I open it up, check it. There's all this white, it looks like, like um, melted marshmallows or spider webs, but it's actually, you know, microbe life, mycelium, mycorrhizae. And after just one year. So I know for a fact that right now, if I fill the top 10 inches of this bed with good compost, in a year from now, all the wood chips I put down there are gonna be spongy and white and um, they're gonna be the best soil in the world. Come on up, come on, Rebbe, we'll have the best soil in the world. Just having one of those days where I just don't want to get out of bed and I don't want to go outside in the cold and get wet and build things. <laughs> I'm just so tired of construction and measuring and leveling and ugh, it's just so exhausting sometimes. We've just been working so hard like the last like week and a half it's just been like straight just like clearing and wood chipping and chainsawing and hammering and don't get me wrong I love it and it's great but sometimes it's just like okay <laughs> and then we're starting a new project today that is um, something I'm really excited about but I'm just like <laughs> I just wanted to be real with you guys I just want to make this very clear <laughs> I'm very grateful for my life and I love what I've created with Jake and what we've created and what we've built and some days are just really freaking hard to get out of bed and do the work. It's hard to do the work but I know it needs to be done and it's going to be great when we finish it but man am I just on the struggle bus this morning of just not wanting to do it and just feeling so many emotions and on top of it I miss my family like so much so much and I'm just so over talking to them on the phone and FaceTiming them I don't want to do it anymore I don't want to FaceTime them anymore I don't want to freaking talk to them on the phone I want to see them in person and I want to hug them it's just so frustrating I miss them so much I miss my friends anyway enough of that I'm sorry. Just trying to be real with y'all. That I have days too when I'm just feeling done. But I'm not done. I'm not even halfway to being done. We have so many wonderful and amazing projects coming and so, so much is happening. It's insane. <laughs> you guys would be like, what? The projects that we have in line and the things that we've been working out and it's just amazing it's so amazing and i'm so i'm so grateful okay i got my cries out which is good it's good to cry talked about it which is good talk to you guys <laughs> i get up put my boots on and get to work yeah let's do it come on guys i can do it you can do it
You ready, guys? You ready? Let's go do this. Come on. Good morning. You uh, ready for this next project? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. The cherry trees are all starting to bud. We're gonna have cherry flowers, cherry blossoms. Let's go. Of all the hemlocks that I have draw knife so far and debarked, this one wins. It's got some sort of a pitch, some sort of sap and pitch in the bark. And just every square inch of it, it just is all caramelized and resiny. And none of it's coming off clean like the other hemlocks we did before you guys have seen us do. And it's just very labor intensive. But what I'm wondering is if I take all this, you know, pitch laden, 
resin bark and I put it in my dehydration trays and dry it by the wood stove, will this be like explosive, amazing, highly flammable kindling? What do you think? Hey, thank you. Does it smell good, Puma? Want What's happening right now? <laughs> Jake's uh, special nutrient dense protein pancakes. But for the first time ever, I made it too hot. And my vegan butter and oil just went to instant smoke and. Now it's smoky in the air. <laughs> I don't know if the camera can see, it's pretty hazy in there. Let's see if I can get it. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh man. That's, that's good. All right, so we gotta air it out in here and. Um, there's an art form to making the fire the appropriate heat for cooking whatever food you're cooking, and I definitely made it too hot today. Sorry. Well, they smell good. Okay. Hey, a lot of people um, pay a lot of money for this smoky char taste on there. Oh, yeah? <laughs> The next batch would be a lot better. Thank you. What do we got? Goji berries. Yeah, Sunflower seed butter. Canadian maple syrup. Mm -hmm. And then some of my homemade jam from last year. Oh, that's uh, what is it? Plum and apple jam. That's my favorite one you made. Honestly, it's so delicious. YouTube. This is the old pandemic victory garden Nicole and I built a year ago. Actually, we built it less than a year ago. We successfully grew a lot of food in this uh, garden and now we are tearing it down, tearing it apart, taking all the soil that's really nice out of these beds and tires uh, and moving it to the more permanent garden. We have the issue of these compost piles that you saw us build that have been really effective for us in terms of converting our food scraps, yard clippings, and other organic waste to living soil for the garden. So let me show you what's inside here. We've got one side that I'm filling up to the top, and the other side we're continuing to add to, and we're gonna build a chicken coop and chicken run in the permanent garden and build a compost pile inside and next to the chicken run so that the chickens can have access to these food scraps and help us convert it into high nutrient value soil. What's cool is that I'm trying to organize the two bays. So there's one bay here and one bay over there. We're letting this one rest and cook. And this one we're gonna keep adding to until the chickens are here. So I dug a big hole in the middle and I wanted to show you guys what food scraps, leftover food, seaweed, ash from the fire and wood shavings looks like after about a year let's go into the into the compost pile so here's the bottom and it looks like nothing can be determined you can't see seaweed you can't see avocado peels you can't see grapefruit and orange slices you can't see anything and look at the from the side I'll bring you guys up. You can see the different layers month by month of the compost and how it has cooked down really nicely. And everywhere I put my hand, I dig out some. It's just very microbe rich soil that's breaking down. There's an avocado pit, not quite broken down eh, all the way, but everything else is looking good. 
greens and browns, nitrogens, carbons, ash and the wood fibers are the carbons and the food is the nitrogens. And as we get uh, more area cleared, we'll have more grass popping up naturally. When we cut that in the future, that'll also become good compost material. So this is the other side and we always find little treasures. Somehow, I don't know how this happened, but this purple potato got in there, started to sprout. So we'll plant him in the garden. And then we have lots of worms and other bugs and microbes in here doing the work. So if you see worms, you definitely have other things like millipedes, centipedes. We got these roly polies. We've got beetles. And we've got billions of other insects and microbes all doing the work for us. Really exciting. I just think compost is the bee's knees. Okay, 110 by 138 and a half. That's our dimension. Then you can choose if you want the front door this way, if you want it that way. What do you think about this location? Uh, I mean, seriously, like, do you want it? I mean, for real, you want it farther back, farther forward, further out, closer to the yurt? No, I mean, it's gonna have to be okay because we don't want to dig into this hill. Right. We can't go too far that way because it's just a bunch of sticks. And, and it's rectangular right this way, so this has to be the 110. So I could go closer to the yurt, though. Like, I could go closer. The hallway could be short. What you guys can't see is that we're doing this in a 40 knot storm. It really is a good thing that we're protected by the forest because... I was like, it's not windy at all. What are you talking about? Because the forest. But two minutes down the road at the ocean, it's blowing like crazy. So, what is a bunkie? A bunkie is a mini cabin. So they hmm. ship you all the pieces and then you put it together. Um, so it's kind of like Legos for adults. So. And we, we did this. We had a big pallet of material just show up off the barge. We somehow got it to come over heavy. And we're going to put up this um, mini cabin called a bunkie, which is basically like tongue and groove, right? Yeah, so it's a tongue and groove structure that we're gonna put together, follow their instructions, and then that's it. Bada boom, we have our bunkie. <laughs> but we do the, the, the foundation, we do the flooring, we do the roof rafters, we do the roof. It's pretty much the walls, the doors, the windows, and we do everything else. We choose to paint it or stain it. We drop the wood stove in it, we build out the inside. And so you guys are gonna come along with us on this journey of building this bunkie. Our initial plan was to just make it into a bathroom because we don't really have a bathroom. We do have a toilet, a shower, and a bathtub, but... For those of you who haven't seen, we got the bushcraft shower, the outdoor hippie hot tub, and the compost toilet outhouse. So I thought, oh, it'd be so cool to have our own bathroom that is like enclosed all in one uh, building. But I was thinking the other day, how cool would it be to have a bedroom? Um, as most of you guys know, our yurt is just one big open floor plan. It's a big studio apartment. Mm. You have our bedroom, you have the kitchen, everything is open. So I thought, well, I would love to have a bedroom. Because Nicole and I are together 24 seven all the time and we love each other, but it's nice to have that private space sometimes. Yeah, if you want it. it's nice. It's gonna be nice and I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I'm more excited than having a bathroom. Um, like you'll be able to go into your bedroom, close the door, or open the door, depending on what you want to do. Yeah, it's going to be nice. And then we are cutting a hole through the yurt, mm. and we're going to do a hallway. So where Jake is standing is going to be a hallway coming into the new bunkie slash bedroom. And this hallway will be... Wait, hold on a second. I feel very self-conscious being above you and high in this, in this oh. switch. Fire drill. <laughs> what is the hallway going to be? So the hallway is going to be like a mud room. So instead of having all of our shoes and jackets and stuff gunking up the front door, we're going to have it here. And then we're also going to have a door coming into the hallway so then you can either go right into the bedroom or left into the yurt. So you can be in the bunkie and go into the yurt through this hallway, this connector, or be in the yurt and go 
into the bunkie with this connector. And now what this will also do is it will allow us to take our closet, our bedroom, move it into the bunkie. We have so much more space in the air to do something. I'm already designing it in my head. <laughs> I'm so excited. But we didn't build the bunkie itself on our own. We found this cool company called Sawmill Structures. You guys can look them up on Instagram or their site is all down below in the description. And this is their harvest model, which is just one floor. And we're gonna build it out to be a master bedroom, cottage, yeah. Pinterest, which is style in the forest, yeah. right? It's so cute. I was so excited to receive it and to see how they did the door and the windows. It's just so cute. I love it. And their Instagram is really awesome too. Um, it gives me inspiration. So. And then we actually got a second one from Sawmill Structures, a second bunkie called the Hillcrest Loft. Yeah, the Hillcrest Loft, because it has a loft in it. We have 17 acres here at Kamal Rebbe, and we walk in the acreage, we've decided that there is one part of the acreage that is the sunniest place in all of Kamal Rebbe, which is worth its weight in gold here, because this is the rainiest place on earth where we live. Yeah, and a lot of trees. And a lot of trees, so <laughs> to get a sunny spot is key, and you're gonna put this Hillcrest bunkie in that area. Yes. And what is this structure going to become? <laughs> what is it going to be? It's going to be my studio, which I'm so excited about. It's going to be kind of like a gypsy apothecary studio hmm. where I can make potions. No, just kidding. Kind of. Where I can make my tea blends. I could do lotion salves and uh, candles and tinctures and all that stuff. So I'll have my own space instead of cluttering up the yurt and making a mess, but then having to clean it up right away. So I'm really excited to have that. And it also has a loft, which I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be so cute. Gypsy apothecary. Yeah. So this first bunkie is our maiden voyage and then we'll have it down when we build the second bunkie. Yeah, I'm so excited. Which is I get luck. a bedroom, you guys. <laughs> so follow sawmill structures down below and let's stop talking and like get back to work. Alright. So Nicole was digging this hole for the one of the bunky footers and I had to I had to stop her because I had to preserve what she was digging up. She's she's found some sort of hugo culture pocket that's the most fertile, amazing soil I've ever seen. Check this out. Like Oh my god, don't cry. <laughs> so fertile, so free. It's just amazing. Look at that. So we're going to save all this and bring it over to the garden area and use it in the upcoming raised beds and when we plant the fruit trees coming up. It feels pretty hard and strong there, honestly. Cool. Hey, you want to hold the tape measure for me? Let's double check her. Okay, 138. You're in the center there? Yep. Okay, next. Okay, that's nice. Okay, that's perfect. Bullseye. Bullseye. One more, yeah. Let's concrete them in. All right, last step for the day. Gable, chin gable. Sit. 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 Go home. Go home. Sit. No, go home. Sit. Okay, come. Sit. Big old piece of bread. <laughs> Cheer me on, babe. Mix it, mix it. Mix it, mix it. Mix it, mix it. Mix it good. Mix it good. Mix it. 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 Mix it.
so we're not um, show Suji bonding these. And I didn't think it was necessary for a few reasons. One, there's going to be a roof over this entire structure keeping the rain off these posts forever, right? Yeah. The roof's going to have an overhang. It's going to keep all this dry. Second of all, it's the highest point of our property. Everything drains out of here. It's not a flood zone at all. Third, we did debark them and they're going in concrete and the concrete itself keeps them drier. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. There you go, kids. So those are the shorties, right? Yes. There you go. Put it on there. Let's see what happens. A foundation. Wait. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, unwrap the full bunkie and build it up. Well, we still have to finish doing the bottom. Yeah, we got to block it, but I'm just keeping myself positive. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we still have to cut the post, make them level, and then start doing more of the frame, and then bada boom. But I can already see how it's going to go. Okay, so it's pretty big, actually. Probably it does. The bed will probably go in the middle here, because the door is going to go here. The door is here. The way that it's set up is like, where's the door? It's kind of off center. The door is there. There's a window here. It's like got double windows. The double windows on this wall. Oh, OK. And then that's it. And then hey, so I just dumped this compost. You saw me dig up in the garden bed here, and I'll put it in one of the new beds that I'm uh, building right now with Nicole over by the yurt. But look at these clods in there. It looks so good. You like break them up, and they're just really amazing soil. This really is like 40 years of trees just broken down. Can you smell it? You guys saw us bring in two pallets of compost to start off with as COVID was becoming pandemic. Um, but that's not realistic to bring that in because it's just so expensive and time consuming to barge pallets of compost across the ocean and bring it up here. So we gotta make our own, gotta make our own. So look at this right now. I was working on this in front of you guys. I've now got this side all finished off and I layered some composted mulch on top. Mmm. It's like insulation. Now it's just cooking underneath there, cooking. And back there you got my ace in the hole. I've got 110 fruit trees that I've slowly brought here to the property over the last two years, <laughs> bit by bit. A lot of biodiversity over there. If you guys subscribe and follow our journey this spring and summer, you'll see us plant all these in the ground. Everything is edible and medicinal. Of course, so many different varieties. And we're just really excited because uh, I'm not a big fan of gardening in pots. I like to put it in the ground. I just can't wait to get all these guys growing. Pine nuts, walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts, apples, cherries, pawpaws, plums, lots of blueberries. Let's go, guys. Let's go.